Hello and welcome to another TLDR US video. Despite the president's remarks at 2am on election night, the election isn't yet over. As such, the information in this video was true at the time of creation, but it might not be true by the time you're watching it. Therefore, everything was true at 11.30 GMT when this video was created. So here's the map coming out of election night, as things stand the morning after the election. This clearly isn't the result that many Democrats were hoping for, but despite Trump's comments, this isn't over just yet. As you can see, there are still battleground states where votes are being counted and therefore things could change. So let's run through the battleground states, starting with the ones that have already been called, before moving on to those where we have less results at this point. So let's start with Florida, because ultimately that's where the night started. And that's because Florida was quite quick to report its figures on election night. Those results told us that President Trump retained the state with a decisive victory, at least by Florida standards. Although polling on election day for the state was close and well within the margin of error, Biden did have a lead of a couple of points, making Trump's victory of a few points quite surprising. In fact, his vote share in the state was the highest we've seen since 2004 for George W. Bush. Ultimately, many attribute this result to Miami-Dade County, usually a Democratic stronghold, where votes can be accumulated in large numbers. Trump's share of the vote drastically increased in this county, and while not winning, his increased support in this area significantly cut into Democratic support in the state as a whole. This shift towards Trump can be put down to a large surge in support from certain Latino groups, specifically Cuban Americans who tend to vote for Republicans as a result of their historic issues with Cuba under Fidel Castro's socialist government. Without Florida, Trump's path to the White House would have been incredibly difficult, so it was a great start to his election bid. Despite speculation in the days running up to the election that Texas could swing for Biden, I mean, we even made a video about it, President Trump managed to win the state and crush Democratic dreams of a more purple Texas in 2020 with over 50% of the electorate voting in favour of re-electing the president. This was a significant event, as Texas is allocated a whopping 38 votes in the Electoral College. At the beginning of the count, it did look as though Biden would win the state. However, as more votes were counted, it became clear that this was not the case. The turning point was around the 50% mark, when Trump overtook Biden. This means that if Biden wants to win, he'll have to look elsewhere for the numbers to get him across the 270 victory line. Like in 2016, Ohio was a decisive victory for President Trump. At an early stage in the night, it looks as though there could be a major upset on the cards, with Vice President Biden's vote surging in comparison to Trump's. However, this proved to be the illusion that many expected, as the early votes and promptly counted mail-in ballots in the state were heavily in favour of Biden. That was until election day votes were counted, and the picture moved quickly towards the GOP. Remember, Ohio is also a key bellwether state in the US, having voted the same way as the presidency since 1964, so we'll have to see whether they were just as right this time round. Iowa, in a similar way to how it played in 2016, went decisively to President Trump. With 99% reporting, Trump won an 8-point victory. This is down from the 9.4-point win in 2016, but remains indicative of Trump's support among white working-class voters in some parts of the Midwest and central United States. While this isn't a surprising result, the size of the margin between candidates may shock people as polls were consistently predicting a much closer race. For the first time in 24 years, it looks like the Sun Belt state of Arizona may have gone for the Democrats. President Trump won the race comfortably in 2016 over Hillary Clinton. Following the loss of Florida, this was an important, though not essential, state for Biden to pick up, so his team would certainly be happy with this result. Analysts feel that the growing, young Latino population in the state helped push the Democrats over the edge, it wasn't just Biden who had success on election night, though, with Democratic Senate candidate Mark Kelly unseating his Republican opponent. The Democratic Party will be looking to consolidate Arizona over the next four years and turn it into a solid blue state. And they'll also be hoping that shifting demographics across the country could cause a similar change in other states, too. Minnesota has gone decisively to Vice President Biden. 
It wasn't expected to be the closest of battleground states, with 538's polling average giving Biden a major lead on the eve of the election. However, because Hillary Clinton only won the state by 1.5 points in 2016, it was definitely worth keeping an eye on. As for 2020, the results were much more emphatic, with Biden winning well over 50% of the vote, putting to bed any Democratic nightmares in the state. At the time of writing, none of the major networks have called the state of Georgia. It is currently quite tight, although President Trump does have a slight lead in the ordinarily red state. I say ordinarily because Georgia has been a state in the campaign that the Democrats have had their eye on, with the hope of potentially flipping it. While all signs point towards an unsuccessful Democratic night in Georgia, and that the final result should go in Trump's favour, we cannot at this stage give a decisive decision because some of the areas still to declare votes are in more Democratic-leading counties, so Biden could still pick up a good number of votes. North Carolina is in a similar situation to Georgia. No major network has called the result, and the current numbers show the race within a couple of points, but leaning in the president's favour. North Carolina was predicted to be one of the key states that, if lost by Trump, dramatically narrowed his path to 70. It is slightly too close to call right now, and the situation could change as we write this video. Ah, <sighs> Pennsylvania. We knew you weren't going to give us your results, yet we still sat waiting in hope. Ah, <sighs> our fault, really. But in all seriousness, Pennsylvania is a bit of a mess results-wise at the moment. Election day voting made up a majority of the reported results so far, which, as expected, has given President Trump a handy lead. At the time of writing, there are still masses of votes to count and report, including over a million mail-in ballots, which are expected to shift the results toward Biden. Whether it will be enough to win the state, or if Trump has done enough to retain Pennsylvania, is anyone's guess right now. Statistics are ever-changing, and they likely will be for a few days to come, so we don't want to go into too much detail in this video, and your best shot is probably just looking it up yourself. And that's because this race is on a knife edge right now, and we probably won't get any clearer indication for at least another day. In the run-up to the election, Nevada has just consistently been assigned as a blue state, after Clinton won it by 2.5 points in 2016, with not much credence being given to the fact that it was a potential Trump pickup. As we speak, there is still a way to go, and it is still too close to call. Biden currently has a razor-thin lead, but the Democrats haven't done as well as expected, or even as well as they normally do, especially in Clark County, the home of Vegas, where Democrats normally pile up votes. As in every state, there are still a fair few mail-in ballots to count, but in Nevada, they're allowed to be received up until the 10th of November, as long as they're postmarked by Election Day, a standard rule for the state. Also, the Secretary of State has warned that there won't be another update until Thursday, saying they're focusing on mail-in votes, which could mean the upcoming votes will favour the Democrats. This is proving to be one of the more confusing races of the night, and it's impossible to call at the moment. But if Biden loses Nevada, it looks increasingly unlikely for him to be able to claw the election back. As things stand, Wisconsin is looking very important for Biden, and it's incredibly close. At the time of recording, Biden still has a tight lead in Wisconsin, but as I said, it's unbelievably close at the moment. Democrats were hoping that Biden would be able to pull ahead following announcements from Milwaukee, but with essentially all the Milwaukee votes announced and the margin still pretty small, it's looking worrying for Biden. It seems that the majority of these votes are mail-in, which might help Biden, but the votes represent counties which lean Trump, so who knows, they might help him instead. Right now, Trump is ahead in Michigan, but it seems that this is a classic case of a red mirage due to skewed election day voting in favour of the Republicans. We aren't saying that Trump can't win, but there is a big expectation that mail-in ballots being counted after the polls closed could massively shift the vote in Biden's direction. In fact, they've even closed quite significantly since they started recording this audio. This is primarily the case in Wayne County, the most populous county and the home of Detroit, which alone could change the course of the whole election. Michigan's Secretary of State reckons we'll probably know the result by the end of the day. 
what can be said for certain is that Michigan will be a lot closer in the end than it looked throughout the night. So, while some of the swing states have already been called, the race simply isn't over. You can see that there are still some key states yet to be called, and depending on which way they fall, this could lead to a Biden or a Trump victory. Ultimately, we'll have to wait and see which way these states fall. In his remarks last night, Trump was clearly upset by this delay though, with him stating that And all of a sudden everything just stopped. This is a fraud on the American public. This is an embarrassment to our country. We were getting ready to win this election. Frankly, we did win this election. We did win this election. For the good of this nation, this is a very big moment. This is a major fraud in our nation. The problem is that the president is objectively wrong here. No additional votes are being cast, and there's no evidence of any fraudulent behaviour. Trump seems to have expected election results to be called on election night, but that simply doesn't happen. It never does, let alone in an election that's so different due to COVID, mail-in ballots and early voting. And, and the fact that some states are still counting isn't evidence of fraud or an embarrassment that the president suggested. It's evidence of democracy working, of legitimate ballots being counted. With many, many more votes still left to count, things will continue to change in the days to come. And we'll try and update you as they do. If you want to be notified when we release more videos, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon. Also, if you want to support our work and our team, then consider backing us on Patreon. The link to that's in the description.